Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Business and union leaders from the UK and across Europe have issued a joint plea urging faster progress in the Brexit negotiations. The organisations, which represent 45 million workers and 20 million employers, have called on the UK government and EU to inject pace and urgency in negotiations to bring about measurable progress, particularly to avoid a hard border in Ireland. Meanwhile, we've been hearing more warnings about falling investment and post-Brexit plans that don't include the UK. We've been to Birkenhead and to Belfast to talk to one business about the headaches that Brexit is currently presenting for them. Helen Thomas reports. Okay. A great big escape vessel deployed with a lot of noise destination unknown you can insert your own brexit metaphor here all businesses are thinking about what the implications are of the two extremes and anything in between survitech isn't a well-known name but you've probably seen its product though hopefully not needed to use them. There's been an awful lot of talking and none of it seems to have affected our options in any way. Uncertainty is the worst thing that we can have in terms of a business. This is the business of survival. Climb aboard. Given the, uh, the press in terms of Airbus over the weekend, we should... Brexit really is now a regular agenda item in boardrooms across the country. And Survitech is no exception. If you take the worst case outcome in terms of a hard Brexit, where WTO uh, uh, rates are actually applied, then you know, just on our standalone business today, that would probably cost us somewhere in the realms of a million pounds of extra cost per annum. The best case scenario we see probably still adds a quarter of a million pounds in terms of cost, but it's significantly better than the worst case. We're delaying and delaying and delaying the decision until we get some clarity whether it's a hard Brexit or a soft Brexit. Survitech makes and sells its products all over the world, but it's UK based. And about a third of its workforce, 1,000 people, are here. Its plant in Birkenhead, Merseyside, mainly makes defence equipment. So what you see here is a, a series of manufacturing lines all set up to make pilot flight equipment. But it's here the company also designs new products. And one product in particular. An alternative evacuation system, or AES, for cruise ships also known as Sea Haven. Instead of being winched off in lifeboats, passengers would evacuate four abreast via an inflatable slide and vessel below. A more compact, lighter weight system that could save cruise operators money and get more people off more quickly. It's a great product that we're very excited about. We're you know, three quarters of the way through the development and testing procedures and processes, which you can imagine are quite uh, are quite strenuous, uh, but we're we're really uh, pleased with the with the progress, and actually we think this could be a real game changer in terms of the market. Sea Haven isn't ready to leave Merseyside just yet. The company expects final approval later this year, with orders soon after. But it will need lots of space to make it. And where that will be is complicated by Brexit. Belfast, home of Survitec's other UK plant and the focus of its Brexit dilemma. This may look like the home of a bouncy castle business, but it's Survitec's marine operation. 250 people work here. Many more would be needed to handle its big new product. For us, it feels a bit like the, the record to the DVD. It is a massive disruptor for the marketplace. So for us, very, very significant, and it could lead to almost a doubling of the size of the company just with this one product. 
Servitec's priority is easy, tariff-free access to its biggest potential customers in Italy, France, Germany and Finland. Without that, Belfast may lose out on any expansion. Our plan was to build a plant in Northern Ireland that would take 800 to 1,000 people. Our initial plan was to start laying concrete in October to November of this year. Um, we've now had to look at contingency plans due to the tariffs that will be involved, potentially shipping the product into Europe. So we're now looking to move product to China from this plant, possibly move some product from France, our plant in France into China, and then build some of the AES within this plant, within the Chinese, or sorry, we'll build a lot within the Chinese plant and some within the French plant. So it's really scattering the work to the four winds and then we'll have logistics costs bringing it all together. Servitec has pieced together its plan B, even though it seems likely Northern Ireland will get special consideration in the Brexit negotiations. Its £15 million investment is on hold, and most of those new jobs will, for now, be created overseas. Is the bottom line that you won't push the button on a new plant until you know for sure that you're not going to have tariffs going backwards and forwards? Absolutely, absolutely, no doubt about that. We can't make a decision until a decision is made with regard to, to Europe. Servitec pushing the boat out, celebrating its new London office. The guests of honour, pilots and sailors who found themselves relying on the company's equipment to survive. As far as Brexit is concerned, the company is playing for time. We've basically bought ourselves another 18 months, so we've kicked the can down the road a bit. But if Sea Haven takes off, it will need to expand somewhere. Northern Ireland, or France, Germany, or Poland? Where will Servitec's next big opening be? Helen Thomas there. We're going to speak to John Vincent in a second. But first, Nick is back very briefly with an intervention from the business secretary this evening. Nick, what was that? That's right. A very punchy intervention by Greg Clark to the Time CEO Summit, essentially saying that the UK should negotiate as soft a Brexit as possible with very strong access to the single market for goods and services. Doesn't mention any minute names, but makes clear he's not very pleased with cabinet ministers Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt, who've been speaking out against businesses who've raised their concerns. He, uh, Greg Clark, says business voices put evidence before ideology. They live in the real world, not some imagined world. And the significance of this is just over a week to go till the cabinet away day, where Theresa May is hopefully going to agree the end state relationship between the UK and the EU. And as I understand it, Greg Clark feels very, very strongly about this and is going to stand his ground. Nick, thanks very much. Well, joining us now, the co-founder and CEO of the UK restaurant chain, Leon John Vincent. We saw there um, the worries in Helen's film about what to do next as a, as a businessman, as a, as a business venture. Do you have some of those frustrations with the government right now? Um, not many, uh, some. And the, and the first thing to say is that our industry has stopped investing, but it's not because of Brexit. It's because of other things, in particular business rates, um, combined with living wage, combined with rental increases. So it would be wrong for people to assume that Brexit is the reason in our sector, mm. and it's used as an excuse, has impacted our sector. I don't believe it has. However, you know, I'm not Shell and I'm not BP. I am a small to medium business. I am probably the same as tens of thousands of small and medium businesses. And I think we need to give a message to the Prime Minister and to those working with her. Uh, we are behind you. Just get on with it. Because it seems to me there's a... It's OK if there's a secret plan. If there's a secret plan and you don't want to reveal it because it compromises your negotiation with Europe, fine. We're with you and we will find out because some negotiations go right up to the wire. If, however, there's no secret plan and that you um, are not sure yourself, it's a little bit like procrastination on a big decision. Do you think there is a secret plan? Do you think um, the government knows where it's going on this? I, I'm not in government. I have some relationships with people in government and I get a sense that there is sufficient indecision um, at the centre of government and to put it positively, I think business needs to say to Theresa May, go for it. You know, you've got a to-do list. It's uh, a bit like my to-do list. Um, 
clean my teeth, uh, put out the recycling, uh, solve all my business problems. And, and I think government is ticking off some of the easy stuff and not dealing with a decision that's going to get any easier. What could be harder, though, than trying to sort out the Northern Ireland border, trying to sort out the membership of a customs union or whatever arrangement you have? I mean, that is the hard stuff. I think we've got three moving parts, right? Well, there is the... Clearly, there's the immigration question. There is the... Uh, By immigration question, you question. mean, will you get the workers for your Correct. So, so for us, and speaking very particularly for our industry, we would love to know that there is a supply of young, talented, energetic people to serve the flat whites or the chicken aioli wraps in the But Lyon. that could be British people. Um, absolutely. Now, what it could be is uh, a good dialogue, which needs to happen, which is rather than maybe, you know, if the government is saying we're not going to have completely open borders... There needs to be a dialogue between industry and government to say how many is right. How many is right for the country, how many is right for business. So where is the dialogue? I mean, have you gone to the Prime Minister, have you gone to Cabinet Secretaries and said, this is not happening and this is stopping our investment? Even if it's not about Brexit, it's stopping us. I think that we could take a leaf out of, ironically, <laughs> Germany's book. Um, we, we, as industry, tend to be a little bit envious of the relationship and positive dialogue that exists in different states of Germany between business, finance and politics. And even within politics, you've got to divide between ministers sometimes and the civil service. So there's probably even four moving parts. I would like us to see a more positive, uh, more engaging dialogue happen, lateral thinking happen, uh, and a better conversation. But in the meantime, she needs to know, and Theresa May needs to know, we're behind her, just go for it. So, because I do think there is a little bit of prevarication. OK, so you think it, that's her, or do you think she is hindered by, as we've seen, all the kind of manoeuvres that she has to deal with on a daily basis with her Foreign Secretary, with her Defence Secretary, and God knows what else? I'm not in politics, so I can only answer from my perspective. Um, I... The, I think the main message is... I mean, do you feel, yeah. because, you know, to be fair, she stood on the steps of Downing Street two years ago and she's talked about burning injustices. It didn't sound particularly like she cared that much about businesses. She cared about the consumer, she cared about the left behind, she cared about the person on the receiving end of bad business. Maybe you don't come first. No, I tell you what, then, I think we all live in an ecosystem and I think sometimes we're stuck in the 1980s. There's the sense that the, a businessman is a man, uh, a male, who is a, in a pinstripe suit who's on his way to the Masonic Lodge and that over here you've got the angry union leader who's envious of business. Business is much more progressive than that today. Most businesses like ours, like Survive Tech that you saw, have progressive values with very strong financial discipline. That's what we want to see mirrored in government, not the separation of okay. left and right. Business needs government to change along with business. John Benson, thanks. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. I've been a